do bones of the lower arm. Okay. So here's our, our humerus is back. Alright. And I'm just going to review the humerus because on the last video I wasn't so happy with my big fat fingers in the way of the parts. So we're looking at this end of the humerus and we have the head, we have the bone below the head, it's referred to as the neck, anatomical neck. Here is where the surgical neck would be found, surgical neck. Opposite the head, so here's the head. We're gonna go to the opposite side, okay? So you see the, the width of this from here to here, this is the greater tubercle. Now you can see the nice groove. That's the intertubicular groove. And then the width from here to here, this is the lesser tubercle. So you have your head. Below it is what's called the neck. Lesser tubercle. Intertubicular groove. Greater tubercle. And then we come down onto the shaft. And we're going to fast forward all the way to the other end of the bone. Because this is going to be the attachment point for the radius and ulm. So here's the trochlea. And that's the attachment point for the ulm. Okay, so the trochlear notch attaches to the trochlea. And that forms the hinge joint of the elbow. Next to it, this is the capitulum. That's the attachment point for the radius. So the radial head attaches to the capitulum. And that can also do a hinge, but it can also rotate. Okay. Remember there's a shallow depression, that's the coronoid fossa, that is to accommodate what's known as the coronoid process. Notice how it fits together there. All right. And on the back, there's a deep fossa, a lecranon fossa, that's to accommodate the lecranon process. So let's go to the ulna. Alecranon process, coronoid process, trochlear notch, and then we have a place for the radial head, the radial notch. Notice the radial head fits in there nicely and allows for rotation. We come down onto the shaft or diaphysis, and then we come to the head of the ulna and the little styloid process of the ulna. That fits together with the radius. There's a little notch here for the ulna, so I'm just gonna put them together, show you how they fit together like so. Uh, in between the two bones, in between the two bones, there's a thick ligament, the interosseous ligament, that holds them together nice and tight. This is the radial head. The neck below the head. There's a nice bump here, radial tuberosity. Shaft or diaphysis. This is called the articular surface of the radius. And again, it has another little bump styloid process. Okay, and again, there is a little notch here for the head of the ulm. When you put these two together, it creates like a little mortise. You have the two styloid processes and your articular surface, and we bring our hand into the picture. Well, you can see, well, let me turn it the right way. 
you can see that this is this and this is this. The carpal bones fit in between the two styloid processes. All right, so let's look at the fingers and the wrist. So these are known as the deformed <laughs> phalanges. This guy's really got some issues. This is the first digit, this is the thumb or the pollux. Second, third, fourth, fifth. All of this here is phalanges and they're numbered. So this is the first distal, first proximal phalan phalange or phalanx really is the way you would say it, phalanx. Phalanges, many phalanx, one. Second distal, second middle, second proximal. Third distal, third middle, third proximal. Fourth distal, fourth middle, fourth proximal. Fifth distal, fifth middle, fifth proximal phalanx. These are all phalanges and that's the finger part. In here, okay, here, you're gonna find your metacarpal bones and they're just numbered. First metacarpal, second metacarpal, third metacarpal, fourth metacarpal, fifth metacarpal. The metacarpals articulate with the carpals and there's eight of them. And what's nice about this is that they're all kind of separated so they can easily be seen. The thumb articulates with the trapezium. Second finger with the trapezoid. The third finger with the large in the center of all of them capitate. Fourth and fifth share an articulation with the hamate, and you can see that the hamate has a little hook coming up off of it, the hook of the hamate. That's the first row. The row behind it, if we continue with the hamate, take a look at this little setup here. So here's a little round P-shaped bone. This is called the pisiform. It sits on top of the triquetrum, which articulates with the hamate. Pisiform, triquetrum, hamate. Let's take a little look at this cutie pie. This one has the shape of a crescent moon. It's called the lunate, lunar moon lunate and then this one fairly large one kind of has the shape of a kidney bean this is called the scaphoid scaphoid just lay the hand down again do a quick run through trapezium trapezoid capitate hamate pisiform triquetrum lunate scaphoid this is a piece of plastic string holding the bones together. This is a wooden stick. Did you get that? 